this is something that's happening to young women and girls. Like they're playing up that misogyny angle of like, these women and girls are victims of something happening to them as opposed to like autonomous agents who made a choice in their own lives and came to regret it in some cases. I don't really talk about PragerU on this channel very much because PragerU is, I mean, I mean it's, rid it's ridiculous. Like I don't think that they have any credibility. I don't usually think that it's worth it to talk about them because it's like, why? Why am I gonna give, why am I gonna drive more attention toward PragerU? Like, I just don't know what the point is of me doing that. But now that I've been at this for a longer time, I'm starting to realize that the reason to respond to PragerU is because it's funny. If they're gonna continue to say stupid things, then I am going to respond to them because like, frankly, that's what does well on the channel. It's a lol cow, exactly. We're just gonna keep just, we're just gonna keep sucking the energy out of it because apparently they're just gonna keep making content and me not responding to it doesn't do anything but mean that I'm not gonna get the viewers who wanna see PragerU responses. So for those people, you're welcome. Also PragerU is influential in Florida now because uh, perhaps Ohio as well because their videos are being shown in schools. So it is worth talking about and debunking. If you just let them be, that doesn't really accomplish anything, except for people being further radicalized because you think that you're above debunking these people as though people aren't still gonna be exposed to their content. It's like spoilers, you know? It's the reason why I'm such a stickler about spoilers. There's new people all the time who haven't seen the thing yet. So there's new people all the time who haven't heard good arguments against transphobia. Wow, short documentaries. Like, I just, I just want to make fun of the fact that it's like, oh, this is a documentary. It's a, tw it's a, it's a YouTube video. It's only 20 minutes long. Oh my God. Here, boy. They just take themselves so seriously. Come here, Courage. There you are. See, this is Courage, and he's going to pull me through. Okay, Courage. Oh, that's so invasive. Is this like a detransitioner's video from when they were a kid. Ooh, why? You know they have bogus material when the intro needs to go that hard. Why is it not playing now? Okay, now, okay, good. Pull me, Courage, pull! Oh, I think that's Daisy. You can tell it's them by the dead look in their eyes, truly. I really am sad that I took my voice for granted. Like, I didn't just take it for granted, I hated it. Like, now, like, I would go, I would do anything to have that voice again. Just, this is one of the things that frustrates me so much about assigned female detransitioners especially, is like, you can just voice train. Like you can just voice train and get your female sounding voice back. Like literally I li anything but voice training apparently. I will do I will do literally anything except become friends with trans women who have all the secrets for telling me how to pass as a woman. Like I just it's like why do the detransitioners have to go so hard the other direction? Not all of them do and I want to be clear on that before we get too far into this. We're responding to a couple of individuals who were cherry picked because they're weirdly radical and delusional about their detransition processes. The overwhelming majority of people who detransition are doing it because they don't have medical access or because they are dealing with social rejection from their families. And most people who detransition go on to retransition later. It's like specifically the kind of people who desist, they go back to being, I'm, I'm totally cisgender the way I was born and they stay there and they become anti-trans also, like it's a vanishingly small, tiny, minuscule minority. But the fact that there are a grand total of two of those people who exist means that they're going to get paraded out over and over and over again. I didn't actually know that Daisy was gonna be in a documentary. Like she's not the detransitioner that I think of when I think of detrans people. Like Chloe Cole just has such a household name that I'm surprised that PragerU didn't tap Chloe for this. I don't know. I knew a dude who quote detransed to being a gender punk. Truly, and I'll go into this maybe more later, but like, I think that almost all detrans people are just some flavor of non-binary, change my mind. So before we go too much further, I just wanna say, hit the like button if you're enjoying the content, consider subscribing and hitting the bell and maybe clicking all notifications to get notifications for the channel. Also consider checking out my brand new merch store, which just launched. There's gonna be a link down in the description and you can also check out my Patreon where there are some promo deals for patrons if you wanna maybe get a deal on some of your merchandise. So thank you very much for watching the content. Hope you continue to enjoy. Now it's your turn to teach me. You can touch me. Okay. It's gonna be all melodramatic. Okay, Come back out with me later, okay? Say hi, mom.
Our goal here is to offer gender-affirming therapy. There is a substantial body of research that shows these treatments Treatment work. Treatment for gender dysphoria. Hey, we, we watched that. Uh, okay, so first of all, I know who this person is. That's Is that Naomi? Her name is Naomi, right? Or nominal, nominal Naomi? I didn't know that she was going to be in this. Uh, but Mr. Minter was in that Judiciary Committee that we watched. And he's a transgender man who works with uh, like adv an advocacy group for trans youth. I think <laughs> nominal Naomi, more like based Naomi. Yeah, the face zoom is very spooky. Is is this how they get away with showing trans people who didn't consent to being in this documentary? Is that they should just show like a a super zoomed in, cropped version of the face? Victoria is proven to be life saving medical care. It really comes down to how uncomfortable with their body. Deciding to permanently alter the body. Do they want to change those bodies? Mike Johnson. There for their detransitioning. Nobody. Enough children have already been victimized by this barbaric suicide. Ridiculous. My childhood was ruined. This needs to stop. He's like a bunch of clips of Daisy. Okay. I had an alter ego, and he was like this boy that I like customized in my mind of like the ideal boy okay Other girls looked so different than i did they were you know expressing themselves very differently i almost feel like daisy's voice is deeper than the last time i watched one of her youtube videos hey guys so for today i was depressed hopeless and i was feeling pretty dejected and scared and alone I didn't like life. Like, I just wanted to stay in my room all day. Yeah, that's like being depressed. And like, sometimes the reason that you're depressed is because of gender reasons. Like, who knows what your problem was? Like, I don't know if you weren't in therapy. I wouldn't doubt that they pitch shifted her. I don't think they need to. I Like, what I'm trying to say is like, I wouldn't be surprised if she speaks with a deep voice to emphasize like, oh, this thing that was done to me. Because, you know, we know, we know that she could just do voice training, right? And so instead of voice training, it's almost like she's doing the opposite. She's like, I'm gonna make sure that I talk as deep as I physically can at any given time. As you spiral into depression, it really feels like you're in a hole that is so infinitely deep. And the depression- Dude, what is with all this weird B-roll? Are, did you see any of that? Like, they had to film all of that. Like, her yelling at the camera randomly. This is so weird. Just was really debilitating in that I didn't really care about... Self-worth is not a real thing. Improving myself because I already felt like I was just... Like, I shouldn't have been born. Just having really, like, dark thoughts. I always just felt very much like there was just something wrong with me. And I was trying to figure it out. And I used the internet to help me do that. Oh, Daisy's problem is that they're still trans, but being suppressed by Catholic abuse. If you see their tweets about how they are constantly having dreams of being a man and constantly want to be a man and they won't do it because it would quote, destroy their family. Yeah, I've been seeing a little bit of that. And I did respond to Daisy a little bit on Twitter, actually. She was like, oh, it's only occasional that I think about being a man. And she, but like, meanwhile, I was like, you literally said that you dream about, you dream that you're a man. And she was like, well, whatever, dreams are weird sometimes. And I was like, you might say that they're revealing, especially if you're having a dream repeatedly. And I was like, maybe sometimes you are a man and it is only sometimes, and that's just called being non-binary and you can stop being so weird about it now. She is still dysphoric, by the way. Like, I don't know if she's gonna talk about that in this documentary, so I didn't wanna front load it too much, but she does claim, like she says that she still is dysphoric. Like, but she talks about it in two different ways. Like she's like dysphoric about and like still wants to be a man, but she also talks about the dysphoria of like not being able to fit in as a woman anymore. And so it just screams to me like, okay, you're non-binary, duh. Like stop being just so weird about it. And yeah, she does claim to be a, she's a Roman Catholic. Ugh. That's where I felt like I could diagnose myself. My favorite websites were YouTube and Tumblr. I really love this whole it's such a, these random people that are getting, like, catching strays for just, like, because they are on the internet and they've decided to put them in this Prayer You video. Huge amount of content that I consumed at that time. I mean, I watched a lot of trans people. I watched a lot of, you know, gender transformation videos and saw these people really just, like, go from female to male visually. 
like they look like men and I was like whoa I didn't even know that it was possible for a woman to pass as a man that well. Wow, yeah, look at that. Amazing. The world, like, that's what happens. Yeah, you're trans and you think it's impossible and then you see one singular trans person who is doing the thing that you didn't even know that you wanted to do until you saw them doing it and then you're like, oh my god, the world is, like, it, it, like the world is livable now. This is so depressing for reasons, Prager, you will never understand. Yeah, like, it, it's depressing that someone was struggling and found their joy and is now gonna be, like, depressed and weird. And, like, I kind of am curious, like, whether she's in an abusive relationship because her she's talked sometimes about how she's insecure about not being female enough for her husband. And, like, she talks about her difficulties with being a parent and, like, tr like failing at motherhood. And I feel like, yeah, she's been, like, groomed by her family and possibly her husband into being D-trans, essentially. So it's like hard to come at her sideways almost if you really think about like, who is she around? Like what? who in her life is supporting her? Is she in therapy? I don't think she is. I think she probably might go to confession or something, but I, th I think she does confession like instead of therapy. Is that what Catholics do? Catholics just go to confession instead of therapy. Anyway, hit like if you're just as confuzzled about this as I am. <laughs> It's really dark when you think about it because the people who are consuming this are children, like 13, 14, 15 years old. And it's sometimes it's not like that content is made for them for the most part. It's so easy for them to literally be groomed. I just started. Oh, yeah, and like literally be groomed. Uh, loving that. Like it being exposed to the idea that something is normal over a period of time is grooming instead of it being a systematic means of sexually exploiting a child by weaseling your way into the good graces of their family, very specifically. Looking into all of it, I was like, oh, so there's genderqueer, gender fluid, there's agender, there's like, you can be so a scary. demi girl, which is when you're like 90% so girl, 10% not girl. Like, there's just an infinite amount of ways that you can interpret and express your own gender identity. And your gender identity is who you are and nobody yeah. gets to take that away from you. Yes. So hearing All that, good things. I just became very- All, Like, it's, it's one of those times where it's like conservative state the leftist position in a way that is supposed to be scaremongering, but it is just like, yeah, no, that's, yeah, correct, objectively. Why do you, th why are you, why are you acting like that's weird? Why are you just saying a normal thing and acting like it's weird? We have people in our community who were actually groomed by family members. So all this like trans equals groomer shit is really upsetting. Like accusing people who are often like statistically, we are often victims of sexual violence and like victims of child sexual violence. And then being accused of being a perpetrator of those things is really jacked up rhetorically speaking. But we've been talking about that for like well over a year now very very interested in having a male persona the more time i spent online the more it felt like real life okay and the more real it felt which eventually led to me just fully transitioning okay is there any way to speed this so up? i came out to my parents as ollie and you know i went to this i guess behavioral mental health clinic for like six days. They had a meeting with my parents and they basically told my parents that if you don't validate Oliver- What do you mean you went for six days? Did what they put you in a place for six days to be evaluated for gender? Wait, that, seem, that sounds like something else was going on. It's what do you mean you were in the hospital for six days? What is it with Ollie's and grifting people? <laughs> or if you don't validate him, then this is just gonna get worse. The best thing that you can do to help him is to accept him as your son. But I already felt like I wasn't what my mom had expected. And for me, transitioning was the closest- This I is so dramatic. All of this film is so dramatic. Can you imagine taking yourself this seriously? <laughs> I could come to killing myself without actually doing it. With all of these mental struggles that I was having, not knowing how to make sense of it on my own and consuming so much of the trans narrative and just loving life hearing people say this made me so much happier again random people get this caught alleviated up. my pain it's so funny to me like l just scream at the camera for a bit while we put a strobe light on you we're gonna use this footage in our documentary 
<laughs> oh my god, dude, it's too much. I wanted to alleviate my pain. I also didn't want to be who I was. So with transitioning, I could do both of those things. I could alleviate my pain and I can become someone else. I wanted to escape my own identity as Daisy. My name is Ali Chadra, and this is my voice. That sounds like some really weird retrospective, like put, that really sounds like a narrative that changed in retrospect, you know what I mean? Yeah, you can tell trans people are scary because look at all the spooky lighting. <laughs> One day before testosterone. Love the piano music. Love that. That was a nice touch. Really the beginning. I, just, I wasn't just playing so around funny. anymore. I wasn't just playing dress up anymore. Like I was actually going to become a trans man and live my life that way. It's giving contrapoints a little bit. Oh, do we get to talk about a different Culturally person, we though? are Mexican and men have to be very masculine in our culture and I wasn't the most masculine growing up, and I think that- So this is a trans-feminine person now? Doctor, will I be able to play the piano after transitioning? If you ask Chloe Cole, the answer is no, because apparently she has a million connective tissue disorder issues that were brought on by testosterone poisoning. Anyway. I had a part on everything that eventually led me to do what I did. It was around middle school. I was surfing YouTube one day, and a video popped up, male to female, and that eventually planted the seeds of doubt. And allowed me to be like just to be clear again like the fact that this is presented as though encountering transness online is a bad thing like there's an implication that this content should not be online where children can access it because it will confuse them and like by extension there is an unspoken argument being made that trans people should not exist in public at all because any knowledge that trans people exist and that this is normal, like, is not acceptable in public. Therefore, like, this is why they try to restrict the access of public, like, people, like, people being trans in public, you know, like, by limiting bathroom access and things like this. Like, you can't be somewhere in public for longer than a couple hours if you can't use the restroom anywhere. Yeah, knowledge of people existing is grooming. That's exactly the argument, truly. Caught by the ideology that eventually led me to hurt myself. Ideology. Mm. Eventually, I just wanted an answer to be given to me on who I was, and I went to see a therapist, and I had only asked, I think I might be trans, I don't know, I want to know. The therapist immediately on my first appointment with her said, yes, I am a transgender woman. She had my letter to transition the same appointment. After that... I mean, you could have been more clear about what you needed, because, like, plenty, like, the... Therapists who are good at their job, as far as hormones are concerned, don't want to be a barrier between you and getting the care that you need. So if you can be clear and say, well, I, well I'm here because I would like to talk about this and I get and get therapy to understand what's going on. So if you if you take that and go on and like do the medication, it's like you have informed consent. Like, I don't know what to tell you. You're the one who follows through. I have received prescriptions before that I have not filled. My brother in Christ, you made the sandwich. Yeah, you picked it up and you ate it. I just took everything slowly. That's usually good. But eventually my father found out what I was doing. And due to our culture, he was not happy. And he took me to Mexico and had me have sexual relationship against my will with a prostitute. Okay. So you I was used. a 19 year old kid. And my father has told the prostitute, take good care of him, it's his first time. He was trying to prove that I was a man. Yeah, I mean, that's fucked up. Like, that's a fucked up thing to happen. Obviously that's bad, but that doesn't have anything to do with you being trans, that's your dad being abusive. If you had been gay, he would have done the same thing. Like, made you had sex with a female prostitute. Like, that's what would have happened. That broke me, obviously. So dry. After that, I go back to the therapist and told her I wanted to transition. And she recommended I start my social and medical intervention as soon as I can. Wait, so what were you doing before that your dad caught? Wait, he just said that he started his social and medical transition after that sexual assault? Like, what were you doing before that your dad found out and 
did this abusive thing to you. Like, I don't understand the timeline there. There's thunder, so ominous. Right, if your D-trans documentary is about how terrible transphobic parents are, then like, I don't know what to tell you except that the problem is not being trans. Like, oh, the rate of suicide is so much higher in the trans community, therefore letting your kid transition means that they're gonna be more likely to commit suicide. Like, no, it's the lack of acceptance which them not coming out is the ultimate form of lack of acceptance. So that's why they're at highest risk then anyway. 11 months after I had started hormones, I was transferred to another medical professional who after speaking with him for one time only, he approved me for surgery. And a few weeks after that session, I got two letters from my insurance approving me for surgery. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. If you're lying to your doctor about what you want to do and what you need, then like, of course they're gonna okay you. Because again, doctors of good conscience don't want to be like a cisgender person telling a trans person that they're not really trans. But I was a little surprised that I received my letter for bottom surgery, which was removal of my genitals without even asking. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Hold on, let's go back over that again. But I was a little surprised that I received my letter for bottom surgery, which was removal of my genitals without even asking. What do you mean? What do you mean without even asking? Yeah, true, you got the approval letter without even asking? Like you went to the appointment, what are you talking about? They ask you like, do you want an approval letter? Like, do you need a letter for surgery? And you have to say, yes, I need a letter for surgery. Like, what are you talk? Okay. My name is Ali Chadra. This is my voice pre T. My name is Ali Chadra, and this is my voice one month on T. Two days ago was my official three months on testosterone. This is my voice four months on T. It's probably not really a good thing that I was able to get my hormones so easily. Dude, Daisy in early transition days, and I mean, actually, frankly, Daisy now, reminds me a lot of um, Topher Grace. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, so much. <laughs> so much like Topher Grace. I don't know if that's a mean thing to say. Yeah, true. If you don't want bottom surgery, the approval letter, you could just put it in a filing cabinet and ignore it. The approval letter itself didn't cut your dick off. You got the letter, and then you needed to schedule surgery, and then you probably need to do a consultation where they inspect you so that they can determine what method is gonna be most appropriate. Like, there's so many steps in between. There's just like so many incremental things you would have had to do to make that happen. It's crazy that people act like, oh, they're just throwing surgeries around. Even medically necessary surgeries, you need referrals for and stuff. Like you can't just go up to a surgeon's office and be like, yes, I would like you to give me a heart transplant, please. I mean, anyone can go in there. Not only did they send me home with the hormones, but I actually did my very first shot right there in the doctor's office. Me too. And I was just, euphoric and it was real and I was actually going to start seeing changes and I was going to start passing which basically meant that everyone around me was going to see me as a boy an actual boy this I didn't care as much about that but you know good for you dude like good for you feels good this makes me happy I'm actually feeling the feelings that you know all those like trans people online were saying that they felt. I just want to say that I'm literally so happy. Hey, it's no offense. It's so much better than I thought it would be. So awesome. Seemingly out of no- It's Ash. Oh, I feel so bad. I, I feel so bad Where that Ash is in Where we've suddenly seen a huge I, spike oh, in get past media. It. I feel so bad that Ash is in this. Like, they have received so much negative press, and like, they clearly have had a difficult time, and like, their most recent videos that they've posted on their main channel are about like, how traumatic it has been for them to be for their body and their transition and all this stuff to be like on display in this way. Like the kind of scrutiny that there is about the grooming and stuff and like that Ash had a hard time not internalizing that that like they are inherently harmful to children, like that they are doing something harming children when like that's the opposite of what most decent people would want. And it really messed Ash up. And so I'm, I'm upset that they used their footage in this documentary that's really fucked up depictions and social media depictions of transgenderism. It's even reached the mainstream advertising world. And I think this is all coming to a head and what this really means for our society. In cases like the case of Layla Jane, a young girl whose breasts were removed at age 13 by doctors who fed her a lie. Take this next case. Layla Jane was born a girl. She okay, so they're coming up, they're they're coming up with more and more detransitioners. It's like, are these people earnestly detrans or are they like, oh, I've realized that I can make money this way. This lawyer worked on the Trump 2020 team. Mm, love that, love that. 
Bailey Jane experienced a host of medical issues in her youth. Her mother, who is bipolar, expressed to these physicians and therapists that her daughter might be bipolar, but she actually never received any diagnosis or treatment for that. The family went to one physician who, after less than a two-hour appointment, green-lighted the hormone therapy. And in a similarly or even shorter period of time, a plastic surgeon signed off after one visit on removing her breasts. Okay, again, you have to go through this whole process. I don't know what to tell you if you're like, okay, well, the mom, I almost thought that she was going to be like, well, the mom was bipolar, therefore she decided to do this crazy thing to her kid. But it's more like the mom was bipolar and therefore the kid could be bipolar and they needed to be psychiatrically evaluated, I think is the point. If if you're a bipolar, you're not allowed to be trans is what that comes down to. Like most young women who go down this path of identifying transgenderism as the solution to their problems, reinforced by irresponsible medical care providers. It's likely that if physicians had properly diagnosed all of the issues present in Layla Jane as a child, she would never have gone down this path. When parents of trans identity- She's fine, she looks fine. Yeah, oh no, after one visit, terrible. ...identified kids are referred to specialized gender clinics. They're often told that they're going to get comprehensive, multidisciplinary mental health assessments. We know that that's not true. In practice, these kids were put on a fast track to medical transition. Layla is now 18. So if your kid is like eight years old, usually there's a longer process of going through the medical care stuff. But like if you're, listen, if you're 16 in the state of Kansas, like you can consent to most medical care. You don't even need to be an adult to consent to medical care. You don't need a parent to sign off for you on medical care stuff in, in certain places below the age of 18. Yeah, Captain Cougar in the chat, the damage of not transitioning is irreversible. Right, this is the one thing that they never are willing to acknowledge, that there are way more trans people who are damaged by the irreversible puberty that they went through versus transitioning and then detransitioning and being upset by that. And it's fighting back. So this does not happen to anyone else. My name is Prisha Mosley. I was a 15 year old girl when the trans community found me, already diagnosed with multiple mental illnesses, including anorexia. They, they sought you out. They, they, they knocked on your bedroom window. They were like, hello. <sighs> and then like snuck you out and, and took you to the, the hormones party where they shot you up full of testosterone. Like, what do you, yeah, they were going door to door. Like, excuse me, miss, can we interest you in a deluge of bigotry worse than the misogyny that you already deal with on the, like, regular a body dysmorphic disorder and borderline personality disorder a trauma disorder i was easy to manipulate and convince that i had been born in the wrong body i was told that this was the reason for all of my mental and emotional distress the gender specialist i will you seem fine like you seem totally fine this video is very memeable true taking to taking to see told my parents that i need to be put on puberty blocking drugs right away they asked my parents a simple question would you rather have a dead daughter or a living transgender son this is oh, the moment so that we all became victims of so-called gender-affirming care. But is this the document we're talking about? You needed this letter signed by a therapist to open up the door for you to, to get these medical treatment. Is, is this the document that we're talking about earlier? Yes, it is. And it took you how long to get this? Oh, uh, 30 minutes. The ideology that has become dominant at okay. these clinics and is that- Yes, correct. Like, right. Like, I just don't understand. Why do cisgender people think that they get to be the arbiters of whether trans people get access to the medical care that they want? Have you ever thought about having a wiener? No. 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 <laughs> no. No. That trans kids know who they are. And therefore, to question them to ask basic therapeutic questions like, could your gender dysphoria or gender identity have been triggered by some other event in your life? Basic questions of screening are completely taboo in these circles. But the truth is that parents don't have much of a choice in the matter. Well, I like it's not like we have a scientific basis for determining who's really trans and who's not. Again, like you can't, like you can't rely on the 20, 30, 40 years of trans people telling you what you want to hear in order to get medical care and have that be like the standard. We want access to the care. We will tell you anything you need to hear in order to give it to us, which is why there's this, like some cisgender person came up with the narrative that everybody always knows as soon as they're like four years old, young trans girls will try on their mommy's heels. And like, because cis people decided that that was the standard, then every trans woman lies and says that she wore her mommy's dress every time their parents left the house. They're gonna tell you anything they think you wanna hear. 
in order to get access to the care. That's the thing about, about cis people setting these standards. Is there an actual trans person who has had comorbid issues and is like, I can tell you how depression and transition feelings work out. Like I can tell you what it's like to be dysphoric and also have schizophrenia. Like imagine the standards of care actually being set by people who are affected by it. 30 minutes is actually a long ass doctor appointment. That would be a pretty thorough evaluation for most medical concerns. Yeah, and like the, the other person, they were like an appointment less than two hours long. It's like, what do you mean an appointment less than two hours long? What do you mean an appointment with a doctor that lasted more than an hour that was like comprehensively going over all your issues, I guess? I did do that stuff in private though. I never would have admitted it when I was younger. Well, yeah, of course, yeah, plenty of girls actually did dress up in their mommy's clothes, but like, that doesn't mean that that's a requirement. And doctors are telling parents in front of their distressed children, if you don't consent to the use of puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones, your child is going to die by suicide. I, I really do think that all those claims are exaggerated. Like, I'm, I just think that you're lying about what these doctors are saying. Like, unless you can provide some kind of documentation or proof, like, I don't, like, I'm sorry that that's the position that I officially hold, but my official position is, I think you're lying about the idea that parents are being pressured to seek this care. You know, it's like, they might be told like, if we don't address this in a certain timeline, then if the condition gets worse, we could be facing depression and self-harm behaviors. But I really doubt that they're just straight up saying, your kid will be dead. Individual healthcare providers could exaggerate or maybe like not phrase things in a way that is ideal, but that doesn't mean that the entirety of the whole process is a failure. And like, yeah, by the time you're 15 or 16, it's understood that you are cognizant enough to understand the long-term consequences. You are allowed to consent to permanent things at that age with parental consent. You are allowed to get a tattoo at age 16 with parental consent, because there's an understanding that, you know, oh, generally speaking, the law is that you can't get it until you're 18, because generally speaking, folks are not responsible enough until age 18, whatever. And then we give the discretion to parents for the parents to say, well, I know my kid well enough. And I know that my kid is responsible enough to, to heal the tattoo. And my kid's responsible enough to know that this is a permanent long decision. And then the parent signs off because the understanding is that they understand their kid and they know what their kid needs. And so it's the same thing here with gender affirming care. The parents are involved in the process and the kids are involved and the doctors are involved. You have to indicate that you want the care at least, not to mention trans kids are not even on surgery and hormones instead of they only transition socially. Right, yeah, like there, and there's like a fuzzy, you know, line between children versus teenagers and people do try to say, oh, it's children getting these things done to them. In reality, it's always post pubescent teenagers. Like you have to be at a certain stage of puberty in order to even start puberty blockers. I believe that most doctors who practice gender affirming medicine, gender dysphoria they genuinely, sincerely believe that they're doing good, but they're not. Finland, Sweden, okay, France. It's, ne it's literally never a good thing to provide gender affirming care to a minor, apparently. I hate this dude so much. This judiciary committee sucked. Norway and the UK are reversing course and asking questions. I've all not found enough medical evidence, psychological evidence to support transgender therapy. You're just lying because there's an overwhelming body of evidence. Got a huge breast reduction surgery at age 17. No therapy necessary. It was covered by insurance. But now that I'm 30 and out as trans, I need two years of therapy to get top surgery. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, like no therapy necessary for a, for a breast reduction. Moms go to get nose jobs with their daughters on their 16th birthday and shit like that. But like, you know, it's it's unconscionable that as an adult, you could just make an informed consent decision. UK, their only national gender clinic for children shut down last year by court order. They were gonna open three more. Order. What do their doctors know that our doctors don't? Transphobia, like there's no, like they're not operating off of any more evidence than you are. Part of the problem is that the current cohort of teenagers that are being transitioned under the affirmative protocol, which lacks guardrails, which takes kids at their word when they say I'm trans, which doesn't do proper mental health assessment. Yeah, imagine not treating children like they're liars. Have you ever considered not treating children like they're fucking liars? Like, oh, we're, we're taking them at their word when they say that they're trans. Like, we're taking them at their word when they say that they're gay. Just like the assumption that all children are being deceitful or all children are stupid or something. Is it the Tavistock clinic outrage he was referencing? Yes, he was referencing that the Tavistock closed, even though they're opening numerous other clinics in order to handle the like volume that Tavistock couldn't deal with. 
All children are, yeah, truly, all children are liars unless they say something that agrees with me. And then they're brilliant little enlightened future leaders. You know, if they've been coached into saying something that I agree with, that's good. In fact, double mastectomies on teenage girls went up 13-fold between 2013 and 2020. Between 2016 and 2019 alone, these procedures went up by 500%. A study published in 2022 by researchers who are advocates of gender-affirming surgeries showed that the youngest patient to have received a radical bilateral mastectomy in the United States is 12 years old. These kids are gonna grow up and they're gonna start to feel the full effects of their medical decisions. They're gonna start to feel the side effects. If you really wanna know whether amputating the breasts of a 12 or 13 year old girl is ultimately in her best long-term interest, ask her when she's 30 or 40 and unable to breastfeed her own child. Plenty of cisgender people are not able to breastfeed also. We've talked about this on stream before, but it's like plenty of cisgender women are not able to breastfeed and like, okay, just because you can pinpoint that it definitely is because you had surgery in the past. Like, again, we don't make we don't make medical procedures illegal based on like a couple of people regretting it. You do genuinely seem happy in that moment. Weird. I would go out into the world and everyone's calling me Ollie. Everyone sees me as a guy. But then, okay. at the end of the day, when I'm home, in my room, Looking in the mirror, I'm like, what did I do? Like, I start getting these, like, really scary thoughts of, like, you're incomplete. You're not a guy. You never will be. Okay, so you, you're, you had dysphoria about not being cisgender. Welcome to every trans guy's life. Plenty of trans guys, after they get top surgery, are like, well... You know, the top part of my body is finished, but the, I'll never be a man. Like that's such an it's a, it's an internalized transphobia. The idea that oh, I'll never be a man because I don't have a penis. I'm incomplete because I'll never really be able to blah blah blah. I don't I don't have balls that can ejaculate out of my giant penis. Like I don't know I don't understand why people don't like can't understand the very basic concept that that's just dysphoria. Like wow, Daisy, amazing. But even though you're legally you know, your driver's license says you're a guy, you know you're not. Yeah, a trans person having dysphoria. <gasps> Bonkers. Wow. But you finally have expressed your true inner self or whatever, the thing that you wanted to do so badly ever since you were like 13, 14 years old. You did this thing to alleviate this gender dysphoria, you know, that wasn't there before, but you made it into a problem. And now your body image issues are worse. That's not supposed to happen. What do we do now? I just woke up one day, okay. looked at myself in the mirror, and asked myself, what the heck am I doing? Because I realized, no matter if I would have gone every surgery, continue with hormones, I realized I would have never been a woman. At best, I would have been a caricature of what I believed a woman was. Mm, caricature. Nobody would help me, because they had more concerns of me reversing everything. I just socially detransitioned, got the implant removed. So I had technically developed gynecomastia, my chest is not like it. It's not legal. It's not medically gynecomastia. Also, like gynecomastia involves certain parts of the tissue becoming engorged, but it's like totally different parts than grow during estrogen. So if you had estrogen in your body, then it was not gynecomastia. It used to be, and it never will. I have scarring, numbness, and unfortunately, my nipples are completely different. Eh, to put it lightly. Okay, congrats. That's what every trans guy deals with. Wow. It's been taking a major toll on me since I realized what I've done. Okay. It was almost five years on testosterone. So if I had gone further... I'm sorry if I seem like I'm lacking empathy here, but I'm just like, okay. I, like, that's not at all different to what... Like, yeah, gender-affirming care requires some sacrifices. Like you will likely lose nipple sensitivity if you have top surgery, unless you go to a specific type of surgeon, unless your breasts are small enough that you can get the surgery that retains the nipple stock. Like, I'm just like, okay, and? Like, w life is hard sometimes. <laughs> like, I calm, like, okay, it's fine. I, I wouldn't have been able to go back. When I found out I was pregnant, I was just over the moon. I mean, I, I was scared. I was gonna have a doctor tell me that like, sorry, you're infertile and it would have been my fault. 
There are so many. Actually, you wouldn't have known why you were infertile because again, like plenty of people go on testosterone and they don't know whether they're fertile or not. And statistically, like plenty of people are infertile. So statistically, there are plenty of trans people who are infertile. Therefore, you cannot know unless you were tested before whether being on hormones is what caused your infertility problems. Any young people who are going through very similar things that I did and are still being told that transition will save them. And it's just not true. Creepy. My story is tragic in some ways, but- oh, It's just not true. It's not true that transition will help you. It, like, just to be clear, Daisy has tweeted quite recently, she truly genuinely believes that no one, whether they're eight or 80, should transition. She's like, none of no one can ever be the opposite gender. Daisy does have the connective tissue. Look at this elbow bending slightly backwards. That's what my elbows are like. She does have a little tiny bit of hypermobility but it's very redemptive in many ways. That cannot be said for many detransitioners. And that's just heartbreaking. Like I can't imagine living with that. Like I can't imagine what it would be like to regret a bottom surgery or, you know, to, to be infertile. Because when you were a, a little child, like 12, your, you know, parents were manipulated into putting you, like blocking your puberty. Uh, like, what about all the weird growth hormones we all eat? <laughs> like, uh, shout out to my homies who are infertile because of all the microplastics. Like, my parents, my parents chose to let us eat salmon and tuna every week, and so the microplastics built up in my body and they made me infertile. If I had known at the time that, like, eating so many fish products would have made me infertile, like, therefore we have to go after the fish lobby now. Like, what? Yeah, I'm 90% plastic. I'm a Barbie girl! <laughs> Being so young, I was so impressionable. I was told so many times, it's possible that you're trans, it's possible that you're trans, that eventually I started to believe it. Unfortunately, transition made things worse for me. It has just kind of wrecked my perception of myself, and I feel like I missed out on like three years of my life. I missed out on three years of living my teenage girlhood. I didn't realize that there were women like me who were different. So, here's the deal. I'm detransitioning. Yeah, so I'm just pretty confident that a lot of these people are non-binary. Maybe they could have each benefited from therapy, but like, I don't, I just don't know why people are talking about it in the way that they're talking about it, you know? Like the fact that, I mean, I'm sure, I would bet that those couple of D-trans people who were just showing, who were just shown in the video probably don't consent to their image being used to campaign against trans rights. Like because the overwhelming majority of D-trans people even if they're ones who genuinely experience regret, like they don't then weaponize that experience against other folks. So I'm not gonna assume a bunch of malice on the on the part of those other detransitioners since they didn't, I don't think they consented or agreed to have their footage used in this video. It's true, it's not a joke. I understand now that I can be a cis woman again. I have- Wow, your voice is crazy though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can, you can just detrain. It's fine, like it's fine. I don't- it's not a problem for people to detransition. Gone too far. I haven't passed the point of no return. I can live as a woman again. I yeah, was something to trans because people were reacting to me, but it was a me that wasn't really me. So I was protected. I was protecting myself with the trans label. These pediatric clinics that perform these surgeries, they will do nothing to help these teens if they decide to detransition. There's nothing you can do. You know, I don't think that's true at all. Ollie is such a grifter. Ollie's got so many other issues. The fact that this transition, this detransition narrative is so popular, like the idea that you wouldn't be able to easily get medical coverage and financial coverage for your physical detransition is just crazy. Yeah, of course, Ollie London. He didn't even go on hormones. Like I, Ollie London didn't even like, I don't think was really trying to transition to be a Korean woman. I think that he was trying to transition to be a Korean man. And, but because some of the procedures were somewhat feminizing, um, that he just went on the grift for funsies. Once you've taken all those hormones, Billy, your body is changed beyond repair. You don't have to remove your body parts to make you complete. When I transitioned, my suicidal ideation did not go away. Transition is not the only answer, and there are many detransitioners like me out there. My name is Camille Keeple. My name is Emily. My name is Laura Becker. My name is Abel Garcia, and they I'm a detransitioner. They only got one assigned male detransitioner for this whole thing. That's interesting, because they really are trying to play up the angle of like, Oh, this is something that's happening to young women and girls. Like they're playing up that misogyny angle of like, these women and girls are victims of something happening to them as opposed to like autonomous agents who made a choice in their own lives and came to regret it in some cases. Yeah, the American flag and everything on this one. 
my name is Daisy, and I'm a woman. If it weren't for the fact that you were clearly in a weird, abusive dynamic with your family and your husband, then like maybe I would be less likely to doubt you so much. Yeah, what was it that Vosh said? Vosh was like, this video turned out to be surprisingly pro-trans in ways that were probably unintended. Yeah, also the AMAB, they have one, yeah, the AMAB one that they have was like, yes, their conservative father literally hired a sex worker to do a sexual assault on them. They really do just be scaremongering up a storm. Like, it is the main thing that they do. They're scaremongering, they're trying to fuel a, a particular narrative that this is, they're always fast-tracking these kids, they never get any scrutiny, there shouldn't be any access allowed. Like, they're not even advocating for, well, I mean, I'm sure that they, they would say that they're advocating for additional gatekeeping, essentially, um, but because they'll say, oh, these people need therapy. But what they're trying to say is, these people need to do th any therapy necessary to make them desist from being trans. Because to these people, again, like the, like transitioning is the worst possible option. It's the worst thing that you could possibly do. So they can't have that. They have to convince you that it's it's literally the like not only the last thing, but basically the it, you should just not do it. Like you should basically just be prepared to harm and kill yourself rather than transition. This showed the harm of this trans panic more than it demonstrated the actual problem with trans people, something like that. If anything, just d has demonstrated that okay, some people can ha can have regret. Therefore, like maybe with some comorbid ability, like comorbid um occurrences, you should have a little bit more scrutiny, you know? They don't ever go for a moderate response. Simply do not be trans. Just simply do not. They spent a million dollars on a Twitter ad buy and it has fewer views than an average Vosh video. <laughs> Truly, just store the wiener cryogenically. If you change your mind later, they'll just sew it back on, okay? It's not that big of a deal. Like, anything that a detransitioner experiences is not any different or any worse than what trans people experience who are going through a puberty that they don't want. You know, I guess the only difference is you got to choose to go through the thing that you're going through, whereas we are forced to go through something like completely outside of our power and like watch this thing happen to our bodies that we don't want to be happening to it and then have to make corrections later. Whereas for you, you know, you opted into it, which does change the dynamic of the regret. I, I just, I don't think that your regret over a choice that you made is as important as people regret like not being able to change and intervene in something. And there are way more of us, of us who regret the original puberty. Yeah, we were involuntarily subjected to body horror and they chose it. And it seems for a lot of these people, like they don't really start to experience the regret until like a couple years after, which is the thing that's so strange, right? Because when you're trans and you're going through this, it's like seeing all these incremental changes happen is part of what's distressing if you understand that you're trans as a teenager you know like if you if you're going through that experience as a teen you feel each step of the process and for it seems to me that for a lot of these detrans people especially these grifting detrans people they don't seem to do a detransition until after they've been on hormones for like years and they've already had surgery and they did surgery like a year or two ago it's like how, how does it take you that long to regret is it is it just dysphoria because you feel like you'll never be complete or is it that these people are non-binary and it just takes a little bit of time to realize that they're not binary trans like i'm not entirely sure yeah i agree eric i would love to see a more neutral or even pro-trans documentary on the subject of d trans people because i'm so exhausted of the mainstream media pushing this narrative that is not real yeah it, and it's hard for trans affirming detrans people. Like they, I'm sure that they don't want to be in the crossfires. They're just trying to figure themselves out and live their little lives. A lot of them, again, still identify as trans. So they're still like being non-binary in that way. You know, it's like this one non-binary person, this one detrans person I know, still like she identifies as basically a non-binary woman. She regrets top surgery, but is like in a relationship with a trans femme and they are able to bond over those kind of similar things that they have issues with. Yes, most e trans people step away from public online posting in order to avoid being sucked into this conversation or otherwise having their story weaponized. Because again, we don't know if those d trans people who the videos were just lifted from TikTok, we don't know if all of those people are consenting to this. Yeah, and we did talk about it earlier, Avery, but I will reiterate because we, it was way toward the beginning of the segment that Daisy dreams that she's a man and 
several times a week has daydreams of being a man and is still actively dysphoric and and has talked about like just choosing to be a woman essentially unfortunate that this kind of rhetoric is receiving more and more attention these days but you know we'll keep we'll keep debunking it so long as they keep making it thank you so much to my patrons and potential future patrons i especially want to shout out tiago nascimento mersh rolvog michelle frateroli amanda b wellington marcus michelle winter danielle mcdonald suzanne maynard spooky heather sylvia past null infinity jamie jam nova Elizabeth Bartell, Sojo, Sarah A., Kevin Young, Athiet, Desi Quiche, Liam Hodgson, and Mr. Atheist.